So today will be very much about uh, is it true or is it false? First one, man releases 130,000 pages of declassified Air Force documents on UFOs. Clearly false. Uh, we're going to be looking at some examples, you tell me. Um, Trump had a victory recently and uh, this kind of fake news was very, very much part of it. <coughs> however, however, this one was not recent. This is dated 1993 and this was just after her husband uh, became, became president. So what's scary to me is there's a number of people in America that of course do believe that this would be possible and uh, we'll talk about more of that a little bit later. It, it's kind of an interesting datum in the sort of hit of America. I mean, I think this one probably resonated pretty well in a certain way. Could have done, yes. I don't think it even looks like Hillary, does it? I mean, she didn't look like that then and anyway. Yeah. So I'm, really, I'm not really sure. Anyway. Then we have this one, which appeared in Russia during the recent uh, event. True or false? False. Putin is not riding on a bear. <laughs> Putin is not what? Riding on a bear. Oh. So it must be false. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. That one's hard. Hard to tell. Now, interestingly, it is a real sign, but it didn't go up in Russia. It actually went up in Montenegro. Oh. Where the hell is Montenegro, you might ask? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Here it is down here, whereas, of course, the Russian bear is a long way away. The, the people in Montenegro just decided they would like to have that kind of a, a, of a connection. Actually, I remember that one when it came out. That was rather scary to me at the time. Oops. Oops. Sorry about that. Is that you doing that? Yes, that was me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ah. Come on, Michael. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I remember when my parents bought me a set like this. Most of you are too young to even remember what these are. This is Encyclopedia Britannica. It's not Wikipedia 0.01. No. And the point about bringing this up is that uh, this was a respected uh, encyclopedia because it was peer-reviewed. Each time somebody would write an article for this, there would be a team of editors who would have a look at it, make sure that most of the facts in there were pretty much correct, and then it would appear in uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. Move forward to Wikipedia. Is it respected? I'm seeing some nods, I'm seeing some no nods. I'm seeing some very non-committal, I don't want to say. Yeah. I would say that, you know, at the end of the day, it's more useful than the Britannica is. I mean, but you'll get to the downside of Wikipedia. Well, I, I'm going to say it's an it's a upside and a downside, I think. Um, a key point about Wikipedia is that, of course, it has peer review. Anyone can, can peer review it. Any one of millions of people who read any page on, on Wikipedia can actually uh, make a comment about, no, this is not correct, or that needs a fact check, or whatever. So I thought I'd choose something nice and uncontroversial like uh, this, this particular venue. And you would have actually noticed, everybody, that there's an edit on each, on each page in Wikipedia. And I could right now go in and log in and make changes in there and put Donald Duck pictures and say it's a terrible building, don't go to it, or yeah, whatever. I could ac actually do that. What is going to happen fairly quickly, though, is somebody is going to come along and say, no, 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 uh, that was an idiot that came along. We will put it back to what it was just before. Um, we will do a peer review like that. So um, <laughs> what I actually thought was interesting was, um, is, is what's going on here? Is this uh, a little bit of censorship by the by the government? Um, I'm not sure. But no, that's the logo. Yeah, what is supposed to be there is logo, but we, we can't actually see it. It's just that, that something, actually something actually, <laughs> whatever. OK. Now, the. You can see it right there on this, this tag. Yeah, it's the logo of National Gallery. Yeah. What, why is this happening? Is that you? Uh, yeah. yeah. No, there we go. OK. Yeah. 
No, I don't want to do that. I just want to. Why did that happen? Someone should find it. Sorry, anyway, in no, mind, I'll, I'll come back to it. Oh, but it doesn't come with the idea very well. Oops. Yeah, I don't have to do the. Never mind, never mind. It's all right. OK. Because I want to go to this anyway. Now, when you go to the Trump page on, on Wikipedia, there is no edit button up here. And when you go down to any of the separate sections, like down here, there's no edit button. Do you know why not? Way too many edits happening at that time. He's, he's the biggest donor. Well, actually, it's a case of any living um, like head of state or any living person who's going for head of state, that kind of thing, is not regarded as fair game for, for editing. And so they have it actually locked. And you'll, you'll see up here is actually a lock symbol, meaning nobody can come in and actually do this unless you're one of the approved reviewers uh, and you can make changes uh, appropriately. Now, let's quickly talk about that for a minute. I actually have a lot of respect for Wikipedia because of the fact that in not like uh, Encyclopedia Britannica that maybe only had half a dozen reviewers, Wikipedia has got millions of reviewers. And if people aren't happy with it, they'll go into the, into the talk pages, uh, which I was going to show you before. They'll go into the, um, here into the view history, they'll go into the talk page and um, make a comment and say, I'm not happy with that statement or, or whatever. So um, Wikipedia I find very useful. But what I, I, I teach, um, I, I teach in uh, higher institutions, and I find it really quite disturbing the number of students who actually use Wikipedia as one of their references. And I find it even more disturbing the number of lecturers who use Wikipedia as one of their references. Uh, and I have to point out, look, you really shouldn't, because it, just like Encyclopedia Britannica, is not a primary source, and you shouldn't be using it um, for that sort of purpose. So I won't ask any of you if you used Wikipedia for your, for your essays. Nobody's going to admit to it. Now, can anyone tell me how I get back to my thingy screen? I don't, yeah, it should be just right here, but it's not. The um, present button. Anyway, never mind. disappeared. Okay, never mind. Okay, so as Abraham, Abraham Lincoln once said, just because you see something on the internet with a quote, a picture and a date, it doesn't mean it's going to be true. <laughs> Quite like that one. Okay. And the lock he took down is actually a lock file. Sorry? The lock that he took out is actually a lock file, it's not a lock. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. correct. Okay, so uh, I just want to go back and talk about America for a minute. When I first saw this some years ago, this really concerned me. This is acceptance of evolution in 34 different countries. It's not every country in the world, 34 different ones. So countries like Iceland, Denmark, Sweden, France, Japan have all got around 75 to 80 percent of people accept evolution as a thing, as an accepted scientific issue and whatever. And then we go all the way around to here before we get to the United States which is only 40% of people actually accept that it's a thing, 40% reject it, and 20% don't know. Now, why is this important? It's because I think a lot of people don't understand how science works and what the scientific process is actually all about. And it's related to the fake news thing, because if you know how science works, then you should know how fake news works and how you can actually catch it out and find out what's actually true and what isn't. Um, it really scares me. I mean, this says a lot to me that people don't know enough about how to actually um, look closely at a situation, closely at an issue, and decide what is actually true or not. I like this image. Sorry, it's ended up small now that we don't have the the um, full screen. But I like what's going on here. We've got a bunch of scientists who are presenting their findings, and. We've got an, another bunch of scientists who are actually listening to what they're saying and reading what they're saying, uh, and in other words, they're doing peer review. And of course, that's how the, that's how the peer review actually should work. Um, 
but there's a lot of concern now that only a small number of scientists are actually reviewing other people's works. And it means that as now that there's a whole lot of scientific results coming out, there's less and less people who are there to actually review and willing to review. So we have uh, perhaps a breakdown in the system uh, is, is possibly going to happen. Um, then, overlooking the whole thing, and I got this image from an article that was actually uh, examining the whole idea of peer review and uh, why it could be, how it can be actually fixed. Um, I thought it was interesting that he's talking about climate <laughs> change next door. I was going to say, look, let's just join up because we're doing, we're doing the same thing. Um, NASA, of course, is under a great deal of threat right now. Trump has said that he's, he's going to pull them right out of doing any climate change research. Da, da. Um, and so, of course, part of what NASA is trying to do is present the facts and talks about scientific consensus. And below this, I just use a screenshot here, below this is a whole pile of scientific organisations that are, that are in agreement that uh, climate change is, a, is an issue uh, and so on. So, um, some things about Trump and fake news. The Washington Post, just after the election result was announced, said Russian propaganda effort helped spread fake news during election, experts say, which is a bit of a worry. Now, do I trust this? The Washington Post? See, it's one of those things. I mean, this is, this is really a, a very strong accusation, very serious accusation. They, I would like to think, they're not going to publish something like this unless it's, uh, they've done fact checking and they're, they're quite sure. Um, some organisations like BBC are really highly regarded because they obviously do a lot of careful um, fact checking and so on. The American press um, are trying to hang on to their respected status but often it's, often it's maybe not as uh, well held as it could be. Yo. I would say that at the minimum you could trust the Washington Post that if they publish something that's false, they'll print a retraction. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to 100% trust what you see, but there will be a retraction if it turns out to be false. Well, not, I think that's great, and newspapers should do that. One of the problems with that is that if you don't see the retraction, it's gone into the social media. It's gone into the, into the system, yeah. yeah. Well, is there also an issue with news like this, for instance? They use a lot of hedge words, for instance, so, and it's not actually making much of a statement. It's just saying experts say this instead of actually coming out and committing yeah. to one way or the other. And then it spreads a narrative which, with how it's more experts say it. Say it. Hedge yeah. the end that can make it the time right. thing correct. <laughs> you did right. You did right. So they're not actually trying to present fake news, but it's not exactly, we have done the research and we have found this, this and this. That, that's not what's going on. You're quite right. Okay, so you all know probably that Mark Zuckerberg had a lot of pressure on him because of a lot of nonsense that was going on in, in Facebook. And one of the problems that in Facebook is that Facebook will keep giving you what it thinks you like. So if you have a particular political bend, it's going to keep on giving you that. If you have a particular social view or whatever, it's going to keep on surrounding you with the same kind of view. So Mark says, a lot of you have asked what we're doing about misinformation, so I wanted to give an update. So he gave a long uh, article about what they're trying to do. This one is from Mashable and it says, Google is removing in the news label due to the fake news nightmare. Is Mashable a trusted source? Actually, that's probably a good, good analysis. Probably is about the level of Wikipedia. Um, this, this, I got this at about the same time as, as this one, so just in the last week or so. Um, well, what worries me is that in the news is actually still there in Google. So, in fact, it hasn't disappeared. So, fake. <laughs> but not intentionally fake. It's just somebody said that's what was going on. So, um, I really... Will this work? No. That won't work, sorry. I really want to get my... Um, let me just do this again, no. Yeah. No, still oh, not. Box, Something 
When I first loaded it, it came up just in the top right. So anyway, never mind. This is weird. Uh, let me try and load this in another browser. Try, let me try Chrome. Ah, yes, if all else fails, try Chrome. Yeah, Safari. There you go. Yay! Uh, at least I have this back again. Huh. But I don't want to edit, I just want to look at it. Yeah. What? Okay. No, then I have to request myself to edit. I don't want to request <laughs> myself to edit it. Oops. Uh, huh. That's weird. Never mind, never mind. Uh, so that, that one. Click that. Is it? Oh. Ah, oh, there you go. There he is. Present. That's where it disappeared to. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, it was also interesting that Nextdoor was doing something about gamification, because that's exactly what I'm going to talk about now. I saw this interesting uh, article just a day or two ago by Hunter Walk, who used to work for YouTube and Google and Second Life and a few other things. How we almost gamified copyright infringement detection on YouTube and ideas for fake news. Now, um, their idea, they didn't do it, but their idea was to do the following. They were going to actually invite investors to invest in videos on YouTube. The idea is if the video went viral, they would make a lot of money. So, of course, people are going to be investing in such things. Pick a winner, go for it, make a lot of money. However, if that video was found out to be um, a copyright, stolen from somebody else, and it was, it was taken off because of copyright reasons, then your money would go to zero. You, you'd lose any money that you actually put in. So, nice little idea. It's in everybody's interest to make sure that whatever's up there is genuinely owned by the, the person who put it up and is not just a rip-off from somebody else. And so his idea in this article is to do something similar, is to say, let's, let's actually put, put money or some sort of value onto, onto news items, and if they're found, like, it, it encourages people to go out and do fact checks, uh, and you're more likely to get uh, perhaps some sort of truth. I don't know. OK, during Trump's campaign, he had lots of slogans, one of which was, lock her up. <laughs> There's only one her. <laughs> as soon as he was elected, he said, oh, well, actually, we're not going to lock her up now, so it's all right. Another slogan was, build a wall. He said, oh, no, we're not going to build that wall anymore, never mind. I think he's still talking about building the wall, isn't he? Uh, not last I heard. It might be a fence, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not last I heard. Uh, he was also talking about deport the Muslims, which, he, which interestingly, that aspect on his website went down the minute he actually won. <laughs> and he also said, let's make America great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's me being cheeky. I actually question, was it ever great? <laughs> It, was certainly, it certainly has been powerful throughout its, its time, but was it ever great? So, to conclude what I'm talking about... Uh, Don't forget, clean up the swamp. Oh, yeah. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. Drain, drain yes, well, I couldn't, I couldn't put them all. Um, actually, a key thing here, and this is, this is actually a trend in my own country as, as well as America, these sort of three-word slogans, three or four-word slogans, is actually quite scary to me because it actually brings all these complex, highly complex issues down into a little slogan that they all hope people latch on to, and people do latch on to them, and hope that it's going to happen without any, any thinking. Oh, it's almost an image of a particular socialist party uh, almost a, decade, uh, a century ago. Right? They have their own slogan as well. Aren't Something you like glad that. Trump is breaking his promises? I am. I am. I think he's just... But, but my, point, my point here is that his, he was elected on arguably a lot of fake information, yeah. including the things that, the only things he got pinned down on were these sorts of things, right, and didn't happen. Anyway, so at the end of the day, what America actually got for their president was this guy. <laughs> true or false? Fake or true? No, he's not bald. Where 
Well, well, actually, this is true. What you see on TV is fake. Anyway, that's where I'm finishing. So let's over to you. Discussion, thoughts. Uh, how many percentage of the actual population voted for at all? The US population, 23% of the voting age population. And Hillary won the popular vote. And I think it's been the only time in history, isn't it, that that occurred? No. No, no. This is the fourth fifth, time. Fifth time, yeah. fifth time is it? Okay. And actually, I, I don't buy that argument because both sides weren't, neither side was trying to win the popular vote. Both yeah. sides yeah. were trying to win the election. Win the presidency. It's yeah. always been very like all, all, all the resources from both sides went into like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, all those pivot states. So I think the whole popular versus electoral thing is a big deal. Yes. They know the game. Yeah, they know the game and they play it. Yes. Well, I mean, the other hand is whether it's either Chris or not for the actual outcome of this election is what I think the more the debate is about what actually the relevancy of electoral college now is. Yeah, maybe we and should get rid of democracy as yes. well. Yeah, that's true. I don't know whether I speak for everybody else in the room. For me as a non-American, I totally don't get your system. <laughs> I totally don't get it. I find, but I mean, now I'm going to sound American and arrogant, but I find most foreigners don't get America. It's pretty hard to get. I think there's a good reason. I think there's a good reason why most people don't get it. Yeah, that yeah. may be. <laughs> True. You know, European tourists who say, oh, we're going to drive across the country in a couple of days. <laughs> well, if you're going back to the fake news, yeah, yeah. I think that, uh, I think that your point of the gamification is very interesting. I work for an online advertising company called Podcast. So we run campaigns for like big advertisers, and then these days they're like, can we not run our campaigns on like fake news sites? And then, but the thing is, you know. How do we detect that? That that is a problem for us as well. Mm -hmm. But if you kind of, if you can punish the sites by saying, you know, if enough people report you, and then you are going to lose all your advertising revenue, then that's putting more incentive in the system. Mm -hmm. And YouTube can do that because they control their own uh, ad network. But uh, a lot of the ad inventory that we buy are on this like on various ad exchanges over like programmatic buys, open RTP. What's that? If you heard of that? Yeah, so that there's no mechanism right now for us to give that feedback to exchanges to be like, hey, this publisher or this site is bad, and then we should punish them. So I, I think that that is a very interesting point that you brought up. I, I don't really get it, but apparently the Facebook ad system is kind of weird and complicated. Do you know anything about that? Uh, well, the ad exchanges the Facebook. They, they closed down their open market. So like Facebook is a whole guard now in the advertising space. Like you can only buy directly with Facebook, which is why uh, we stopped doing business with Facebook. But that means that they might be able to do a similar thing to, to punish. Yes, people. they could, but are they doing anything? Well, they're, they're promising they're going to do something. Yeah, they're promising. So. Um. Does anyone see any huge problem with the fake news gamification thing we're talking about? Well, I can hire prisoners in China to vote for me or something like <coughs> for like a couple thousand dollars. Exactly. But, yeah. but it will yeah. it will risk gamification works both ways. It can. That, that was my meeting. The bad limits can be used for gamification. However, yeah. And it, it, it's it's a very uh, you talk about evolution. And some element of evolution and gamification. We are all we all come from copying each other kind of species, you know. <laughs> so if you see somebody doing something, especially in smaller countries, that's a problem because they are so compact. You see one group doing something, everybody just follow. I see that in many places, in Singapore. I see somebody is carrying one particular type of bag and then I recently started taking this public transport and uh, I saw like uh, within two weeks I see most of them carry the same type of bag. I observe all this and uh, I see some things wearing certain type of option and then within two weeks I see almost all of them. So, it's a 
gamification is, uh, you know, the in gamification you have this PBL, the point leaderboard and uh, the badges and, and these are the badges of, like I follow, I'm on the leaderboard and so mm -hmm. there is a element and there is also a losery element in gamification that uh, you enjoy, you know, there is a losery element of that and then people enjoy bad news sometimes, you know, it's very really exciting and it's like, oh, it's very British. They relish it and they share it. They want to share things which are like very exciting and can be gory sometimes, but still they want to share it. Like Asha shared a freaking moment with you. So, so that PBL comes into that. And, yeah, there's an element of that. And I want to just pick up on a point that both of you guys made about um, not being able to like buy 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 reviews. So I guess that's uh, quite an obvious point, but I think the effectiveness of peer reviews depends on the identity and the qualification of the person doing the review. So it's one thing for a scientist to say, yeah, because I'm qualified in this review, I can kind of understand things on this level, so I can review your work. But I think uh, because uh, the distribution of content is now like um, kind of democratized, so everyone can publish, um, anyone can publish without uh, being qualified to it, it's a whole monkey area. But everyone can also review uh, without qualifications. So if all these like cottage industries in uh, kind of like the wild west or online spaces where you can uh, spend like 25 bucks and buy, you know, come to the followers, 500 quality reviews. Likes. And, yeah, <laughs> likes, whatever. And, and so um, the moment, I, I think the concept of gamification to like, yep, this is good, this is bad, uh, this is a good concept. But the difficult bit is like, you know, how do you know that these 10,000 people that say this is good, that 9,000 of them are not think, like, uh, by, the, by, the, by the guy who's running the site? What? what, what? <laughs> Likewise, what? any review you Probably. find in magazine, there's no guarantee you're not caught as well. It's a problem of technology which can be solved by technology again. And I see there are a lot of new things coming in market, like uh, we are talking about blockchain and uh, why not use blockchain to validate certain things, especially certain news articles and news information. So maybe we can use blockchain to validate things. And I think uh, one way to validate is that if you say this is fake news, you have to inform. You know, you have to link to an external source to say why is this, is this fake or is it to validate this or to validate this. Then that's a, then you know the linked article would also have you know good or bad. So inherently you're building a web of indexes of how good the source is. Yeah. yeah. I mean I think there's some simple algorithmic things that Facebook can do to ameliorate the problem a little. Like for instance, I mean supposedly Facebook can tell you if you're American, whether you're red or blue. And I think there was a button you could push and they would tell you. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if a particular story is spreading on the red web and not on the blue web or vice versa, that may suggest that it's a bias. <laughs> well, well, actually, just, just to summarize that, to finish off this session, obviously we've got to finish. Um, in fact, the guys who actually picked the polls correctly for the Trump win actually did their, <coughs> got their data from the, the, uh, the social media. Because yes, they do know better. Because that's what people are actually doing rather than people saying what they're doing. Or a lot of people just did say, I'm, I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to vote. Right. Yeah. And, and so through social media, they could tell how it's going to go more right. than they could. Uh, I think the best way to read a news these days is uh, read the, the comments below the news rather than reading the news. Yeah. That's where you get the yes. full sense of the news. I generally read the headline a little bit on top and then I straight away go to the comment. That's where you understand, okay, this is the center. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're done.